All right, we're going to take a look at saving values to slices. Now, let's remember that a slice just provides access to elements in an underlying array. It's not like the array where the array saves its own values in its own uh, place in memory. So this can, this can create some unexpected behavior. If you save a value to that slice, well, it's also going to affect its underlying array. So if you keep track of what the underlying array for that slice is, you know, you won't have any unexpected changes in your application. So here we have our array. And as you can see, we know it's an array because we are giving it a length. And down here we have a slice. And as you can see, we're not giving it a length. So it's obviously a slice. So let's go ahead and run this real quick. And as you would expect, we print it off our array, and then we have our, our slice here that we're creating, and we're handing it, you know, we're saving, you know, we're, we're assigning a slice of this array. So remember, the low bound is two, three, four, five, six, so it's gonna be the letter C, D, E, F. As you can see, that's what printed here. Now remember, since we're assigning a slice of this array, this is going to be this is going to be our underlying array for the slice. Every slice has an underlying array. So when we get down here and we assign the letter Z to the third index of that of the slice S, so 0, 1, 2, 3, we're going to change the letter F to a Z. And as you can see, when we print it off down here, we do get a Z. Now, the one thing you might not expect is that the underlying array, well, we also changed the F to a Z there as well. So keep you have to keep track of what the underlying array. And since we're passing in a slice of this array, this is the underlying array. Now, let's say, for instance, we wanted to take a segment out of an array save it into a slice, but we want to make changes to that slice and we don't want to change that original array. Well, that's what we're going, going to do right here. So again, we have our array and we have our, we're creating a slice here. Now, this time we're using the Golang, the built-in uh, function make. And this can take three parameters. It can take a type, a length, and a capacity. As you can see here, we have a slice of string as our type, and we're passing a length of four. We don't have to give it a capacity, and if we don't, it's just going to make the capacity the same as the length. So the capacity is four. Um, let's run this. Okay, so you can see we print off our array, and then we go ahead and print off our newly created slice. Now, this is just four uh, empty strings. Remember that every anytime we make a slice, we're creating an underlying array. So this one in the background is creating its its own underlying array. Um, we actually can't even see it right now, but it's creating that underlying array and it's placing four zero values for strings. So it's just putting four empty strings in this array. So we have two arrays. We have the array that we we created here, and we when we create the slice here, it creates an underlying array in the background. So anyway, we printed that off, we see that, and then to take a segment out of this array and save it into our slice, we're gonna use the built-in function copy. And copy is expecting a destination, a source, and it's going to return the number of elements that it copied. So as you can see here, we're assigning the result of copy into the variable num, which is just, it's just going to be the number of elements that we copied. The destination, like we said, is going to be the slice. That's where we want to save uh, this stuff to. And we're going to go ahead and pass it a slice of this array. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We're going to pass it C, D, E, F. And that's going to be placed into our slice. Now, since S already has an underlying array, it's not, it, it, it's not going to use this as an underlying array. Um, so this one still, slice S still points to its own underlying array. 
So we pass those four elements into it. As you can see, we saved four elements. Um, we print our slice, it's C, D, E, F. Um, we, we go ahead and we assign the value Z to the third index. So zero, one, two, three. So F is going to be changed to Z. And then we're gonna go ahead and print off letter, uh, the letters array and the S slice. So as you can see, as expected, we changed that slice. It changed the value to Z in the third index. Now, remember that it's not actually changing the slice, it's changing it that underlying array. And since this has its own underlying array, you know, we don't actually, it's not uh, pointing towards this other array. So the letter F in this situation just stays the same. So I hope that cleared up a few things uh, if you run across something unexpected. But just remember, uh, every slice has its underlying array. And if you keep track of what the underlying array is for each one of those slices, you know, it, it can keep out a lot of confusion. And just remember, slices are really great. Uh, if you want your application to run really fast, you know, slices are a really good tool for that. All right, I'll see you in the next one.